welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started today, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for the missing piece? of the puzzle to grow your business. Well, I want to invite you to watch my free online training on how I went from hobbyist to celebrity wedding planner and how you can do it too. You will discover the puzzle pieces that will absolutely transform your business from hobbyist to like, hell yeah, I can do this full time. On puzzle piece one, I'm going to go all into personality. Puzzle piece two, how to keep the high quality clients happy. Puzzle piece three, I'm going to talk about what separates the good from the great. On four best kept secrets to profitability and all about implementing the strategies. And five, If you're going to attract the best, come on, people, you got to be the best. And then I'm going to show you how to create the magic and put it all together for you and your clients. So don't wait another minute. Go on over to go.angelaprofit.com. That's G-O dot Angela Profit, two F's and two T's dot com and watch my free videos and download my free workbooks that will take your business to the next level. Today, I am super excited to talk with Emily Sullivan, who is the founder of Emily Sullivan Events. Hi, Emily. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Angela. Thanks for having me. I'm I'm so excited. excited to talk to you. I love talking to other planners and getting perspective. And it's just like an easy, fun conversation. We have lots of fun things yes. to share. We have lots um, to say, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> Especially those that have been in the business a long time. Right? It's like the older I get, and I like to say more experienced, um, it's like <laughs> when people are like, I'm so old. I'm like, you're not old. You have a lot of experience and knowledge. And you right. Have- I will use that. <laughs> right? Isn't it good? Um, and like the more I just want to talk and educate and... Um, People are like, wow, you're really passionate about education. I'm like, wow, I really want people to understand that this industry is not so perfect. And while everything Mm -hmm. needs to be perfect and what we're offering as a service or a product, um, it's not. So I'm excited to hear your perspective today. Mm -hmm. And so for our listeners who don't know you yet, tell us a little bit about your background and how you even got started first off. (laughs) So I am in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I specialize in destination New Orleans events. And I just um, celebrated 12 years in the industry about two months ago. So I've been doing this about 12 years. And thank you. It feels like forever at this point. (laughs) Um, I have to tell you that I just sort of fell into wedding planning. I didn't really grow up dreaming of weddings or planned weddings. I'm not married, but I just have that Southern hospitality thing going. (laughs) And so I think it's a good fit. Um, So back following Hurricane Katrina in 2006, I worked for a company that required travel. Um, So for anything I did beyond the job I was in at the time, and I was working for a cosmetics company, I um, was going to be asked to travel. And I, I was pregnant with my oldest son, who is turning 12 this weekend. Um, and I just didn't want to, um, have that kind of life being a single parent. And so I just started to research kind of what can I do that gives me a little bit more flexibility. So I actually started out by just doing hair and makeup for weddings. And, um, I took a little bit of that. I just kind of experienced experienced a little bit, started booking some events, and then I quit my full-time job within like two months. And someone said along the way in that first year, you are super organized. Would you want to be my day of coordinator? And I was like, well, I never really thought of that before, but sure, I'll give it a try. And I did. And then it was just an instant click. It was a fit. And so 
the following three years, we were just growing like crazy and we started doing full service. And then before you know it, we offer all these wedding services. And and so I think when you find a job that um, you are just, your personality is a good fit for and you're willing to work hard at it. And I think that's the thing looking back, like I was so, um, it wasn't easy. And there were a lot of times when I could have given up. And, and if you've ever heard me speak before, you know, I refer to it as the great breakdown of 2010, because I really had that. <laughs> um, but just being able to stick with it. And now I'm on the other side of it where I'm actually, you know, able to support two kids and travel and, and do all the fun things that, that business owners get to do. You know, I've learned over the years, it's like, you just have to go through some of it. And those breakdowns Mm -hmm. make us so much stronger and so Mm -hmm. much better. And if everything was perfect and shiny and pretty, it's like everybody would do it because it's, it's not easy. You're either wired to do it, have the breakdowns, get through it, or you're not. So it's... I agree. And I think, you know the market looks different now from when I first started in 2006 where, you know, I was just getting a website and that was a big deal. And we're completely reliant on social media and how curated it is and what our images look like. And honestly, from the outside, it does look fun because those are the things we're posting. Um, But there's a whole different side of that, that that people don't know about. Yeah. And that's where those of us in the industry, we all get it. (laughs) We're like, Oh, you're my people. (laughs) You get it. You understand. Yes. Well, it's very rewarding. I think that, <laughs> yes, it is. And I think that's why a lot of my good friends are in the industry because we understand each other. Like we know the reality of what this looks like. Yeah. Um, and other people are kind of like, what? so when I, when I meet new people and they say, what do you do for a living? And I say, well, I'm a wedding planner. And they say, oh my gosh, that's so fun. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is. It's enjoyable. And you have to be committed to it because I, I give up almost every Saturday. But on the opposite side of that, it's not fun all the time. No, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. It's a real job. <laughs> it is. Oh, I can't yeah. stand it when people are like, oh, well, when you had a real job, I'm like, what the hell do you think I do now? Like I running a business. I work way harder now. <laughs> yeah, right. No one tells you that. It's like, oh, I can set my schedule and go to Starbucks every day. And it's just like, oh, it's just right. not, not like <laughs> um, There are pros and cons. Exactly. Don't get me um, so, okay. So we know how you got into the wedding industry and, but it's so fascinating because most hair and makeup and like creative beauty people that we work with, they are not the most organized. Um, and mm-hmm. so that is amazing that you have like the left and the right and you like know the creativity, but you also have the organization because that just doesn't seem typical. Um, I mean, do you find mm-hmm. that with the beauty teams that you work with now? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, realizing how important the logistics are, honestly, is challenging. Um, where so, well, we just had an instance a few weeks ago where a makeup artist like was not at all concerned with our timeline. And I'm like, this is all for a reason, you know, and this is why, and it's not just about you. And so that definitely happens for me. Uh, the cos- when I worked for a cosmetics company, I was a makeup artist, but I was also on the business side of things budgeting, sales, events, that was sort of my job. And so, it, you know, uh, while I'm creative and I enjoyed doing makeup, I really like to dig into things like numbers and y- logistics. That's awesome. Yeah, people don't... And get- we actually... They oh, go ahead. That, yeah. <laughs> Our um our company actually we did we continued to do hair and makeup services through oh. um, through around 2012 2013 I think is when we stopped and we were just kind of like okay we need to focus on for me it became a money issue like am I making money doing this anymore uh, or am I investing a whole lot of time and effort into this and then the you know the the recourse isn't as much and so I had to look at business-wise, what's making money and what isn't and make that decision not to do it. But we still, I personally didn't do it, but we had teams that worked for us for years and, and we kept offering those services. That is awesome. That So let's talk about that. Like share with us your journey and and what is the difference between, you know, offering different services and how you make sure you're profitable And Mm -hmm. how has that integration worked as you've grown over the years? And do you use some type of a a strategic process or strategist annually to make sure that 
the company is profitable with the different companies that you have? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we don't want one section to have to pay for the other section. And so specifically when it came down to hair and makeup, you know, we're working with people who we're hiring out on a commission basis. And so I'm hiring these people, I'm paying them, you know, 60, 65% of it. I'm keeping the rest. And at the end of the day, I'm like, we need schedule. We need somebody to do scheduling. We need somebody to do contracts. We need somebody to maintain the website and the social media. And in the end, it just that 35% cut when I was no longer physically doing it wasn't enough for me to really continue to invest my time in it. And honestly, I I probably continued to do it for so long because I have this thing where like, I want to employ as many people as possible. Like I'm like, I want to create jobs for people. And so I just didn't want my team to be, you know, left out in the cold without a job. And so I just kind of kept extending that more for them than for me probably. Um, But then as our planning business really began to grow and and it, it really has, I mean, I think we're doing somewhere like 54 events this year total, including intimate weddings. Um, oh, that's as it continued to grow, you just, you have to dig into it and see like, is this worth it or is it not? Yeah. Um, and I think for some of us who like, I remember when I first started, like, I just loved it. Like literally loved, like I did it for fun. I had a real job in healthcare. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, this, mm-hmm, and then I just mm-hmm. said, yes, 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 yes. And then it was just like, oh shit, what am I going to do all this stuff? Like, I can't do this by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. it's very like oh, goodness. pressing kind of. <laughs> when did you know you needed a yeah. team? Like, how'd you start to grow that? Well, I grew quickly, honestly. And, and one of the things I really like to talk about typically is kind of my experience from where I started and, and what I did wrong in the beginning. And, and the reality is that I was 27 years old. I had a small child um, that I was raising on my own. And I didn't have time to or, or, or really even know that I should be investing time in my business, you know, working on the business. And so I didn't really do planning the way I should have. And I would say this went on for the first six years of business where I was just kind of like getting by. Okay, I'm saying yes to every wedding that's coming my way. I'm just adding more people. But I had all of these people in the wrong jobs and they weren't being used efficiently. And what that looked like is I was still completely stressed out, even though at one point I had, you know, 10 people on my team because no one was really taking anything off of my plate. And um, that's what led to that breakdown that I mentioned and how I was just kind of like, I can't live like this. Like I have insomnia. My health is really bad. Mm-hmm. What, what can I do to change this? How do I start over? And that I rebranded the year after that. I started over with just myself and one assistant. And then from that point on in, in 2012 until now, I've been very intentional about what we say yes to when and how we add services or uh, or other things to our business and that we grow smart, meaning we have enough team to take care of those things. Everybody uh, is responsible for their part. And I was, and I don't think we talked about this from the beginning, but I actually, so I own Emily Sullivan events and a year and a half ago, we started uh, intimate weddings by Emily, which uh, we first started out thinking it would be like a weekday wedding company where we would promote weekdays since we're in the destination business. Yeah. Um, but since then, we've kind of become this all encompassing, you know, whenever for 75 people or less or elopement. And it's, it's really, really taken off this year. And so we're glad for that because it's just, it's fun that it's back to the type of events that are really fun to do. Um, and then three years ago, I also bought a designer linen company that was going out of business and added to their inventory. So we also have a full rental inventory now, specializing in linen, tableware, things like that. Um, so not necessarily looking to get into rentals that like chairs or furniture or things like that, but really things that we were renting for our clients anyway. Right. And yeah. um, that business is actually now starting to kind of take off outside of our own clients. So those are the three things that we have going on right now. And I, I think that's important because this week is probably one of our craziest weeks uh, of this year. I mean, definitely is. We have a uh, rehearsal dinner and a huge 300 person wedding and another wedding. And um, we have multiple rental uh, things going out and needing to be set up this week. And I actually last night was like, I'm really relaxed. Like this is unusual for situations when we're really, really busy. And then I realized it's because 
everyone on my team does their part. Everyone has a job. Everyone is efficient at it. I don't have to follow up. And I know that it's going to get done. So it's taken this enormous amount of pressure off of me to have the right team members so I can kind of step back and just do the parts that I'm good at. And I think that's key. Oh, absolutely. And a few key things that you've said for our audience listening out there, they, I think if you listen to Weddings Unveiled regularly, all of the people that I talk with that have experience to share, they constantly, you like hear this pattern of team, team growth and breakdown. It's like, you know, everybody kind of goes through the same thing, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but the light never mm-hmm. ends. Like it just keeps mm-hmm. going and things keep growing and things get better and everything happens for a reason. Um, and so something that you said that I would love for you to elaborate on is, so having key team members to run each of the different things that you guys do, do those team members cross over? Or are they trained in, in doing each of the services or are they 100% completely separate? Um, so there is a little bit of crossover. So the way we manage is, is I have myself and then I, I have Courtney who's full time. She's in our office. So she is my assistant, but she also manages intimate weddings. So she is the lead planner for intimate weddings. So she takes care of all the vendors, securing it, the timelines, the setup, and she actually works those events. And so I still participate in the process and I still to this point have showed up to every event just because that's kind of the way I am. I I want you to, you know, I want to be involved. I don't want to be completely apart from it, but she's the lead planner and she kind of designates everything that goes along with that. And then we have another person who is part-time who is our production um, leader and she takes care of all the rentals. Um, So rentals that come to our clients set up for our clients, but also for, other rental um, like like venues that we have relationships with and clients who are coming from other planners, things like that. So she manages that completely. She also takes care of all the setup details for events. So she creates, um, once I've done the design plan and kind of the direction we're headed, uh, the floor plans, she takes that and she puts it into a format and she hires the people that we need to execute that. So she manages getting everything there, managing that team, that sort of thing. Um, we also have a social media person who's part-time and then we have uh, a team that just works events. So they don't actually work in our office. They are just event managers and we kind of rotate who's on site at events, but we all, no matter what our job is, we actually work events. So they don't work every event. We kind of rotate on the schedule, but they all have event experience and they all work events. That's awesome. That's so, so there great. is been a little crossover in that, but like not really when it comes to responsibilities in the office. Yeah. Um, and the, the way we've set that up as we've grown, and it was really important for me to keep it simple um, because, again, I learned this from experience, but I wanted, we are one parent company, Emily Sullivan Events managing the other companies. And so we're under one umbrella, which makes it much easier when it comes to things like bookkeeping, Mm -hmm. payment, staff, you know, things like that. So we we tried to be smart about the way we we structured it as we grew so that um, we were just efficient and not spending a lot of time, you know, managing all these different things. Yeah, that's, that's just, it's amazing. And it sounds like you have a wonderful team because without a great team, it's really hard to grow. Um, would you oh say goodness. that a nightmare? Uh, yeah. Right. And when you don't have the right people in place, it's just another <laughs> growth opportunity. Um, would you, what would you say? I mean, what you already do, I feel like is very unique. And I feel like another key takeaway here is having a niche and growing mm-hmm. that like you saying specifically doing the elopements under 75 people, like that's a very special niche. And it sounds like there's mm-hmm. plenty of business to go around in that niche. So niching is a good thing. Well, we were actually the first in the city to come oh, up with, wow. with this. So we, we were the first ones to kind of start implementing it and marketing towards it. We we're seeing a few more people start to do it now, like always. Um, yeah. But we were the first ones and we really tried to be smart when we developed the packages. We work with the same venues and vendors and we create packages. So it's all inclusive for the client. So what that looks like is when they come to us, they're hiring us to do it all. 
and they're paying us for the full amount. And then we're actually hiring everybody out. So it's, it's a package deal, which is really the complete opposite of what we do for ESC clients, which is very detailed, you know, walking you through the entire process. So something that I'd, I'd love to elaborate on and I mean, this just happened to me last weekend where, um, you know, someone, a a lot of newer people don't understand why we put everything and we say, it's a package deal. If I'm going to plan your wedding, we're also going to design it. We're also going to get the vendors. Mm -hmm. Like We build your team for you because we know who has the same goals. And some mm-hmm. clients come at us, I don't know if you get this too, and they're like, well, that's just because you get a kickback or you get commit." And it's like, no, actually, it's because when we work with newer people or people who don't understand how to read our timelines and how to have the same expectations, and you're upset about something, we can't really fix it because we don't know them. We don't know the process. And it is very mm-hmm. hard as a planner to maintain branding and and what you're putting out to share with others when you don't have control of the big picture. And so mm-hmm. what happened last weekend to us is we, the bride hired a photo booth company. Um, you get what you pay for. And, uh, you know, I didn't really care that much. I'm like, it was an afterthought. It was a week before the wedding. She's like, hey, I decided to get a photo booth. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, well, where's the contract so I can see the time? And then the time she gave them, I'm like, well, you're having a dinner, like a seated dinner. No one's going to be in that room room where the bar's at, the servers are serving wine at the table, that time isn't going to work unless you don't want anyone Mm -hmm. using the booth. And she's like, well, just change the time. So I did. And then she apparently told them when she hired them, she did not want any props, that this was going to be used as her guest book. And Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Nobody told me. I didn't hire them. And so they come in and I mean, they had not only props, like, I mean, three tables worth. And so, oh my and then, yeah. And so then her mom yesterday, I, you know, like to follow up afterwards with the parents because they were heavily involved. And she's like, the only thing is she was really upset because of the props. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, that's what, um, you know, the bride told them absolutely no props. This was her guest book. And I said, you know, I'm not trying to be rude, but this is just an example of why I'm a control mm-hmm. freak about hiring everyone and taking care of the communication. Because if I don't know, I can't fix it. And I had no idea. And she's mm-hmm. not, she was such a sweet, passive bride. She wouldn't come up to me and be like, oh my God, there's props. Mm. Like, take them away. So it's just, you know, every single event we do, it's like one, there's one bad egg in the bunch where it just, the experience, I'm like, are we ever going to get it perfect? (laughs) So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're constantly learning. And so I feel like there is a huge, unique advantage for clients hiring your company because you are in control of the outcome of how wonderful everything can be. So, well, and I always tell people that up front, you know, uh, uh, of course through the booking process and we'll occasionally have that person who wants to get a deal or, you know, negotiate. And I'm always like, why do you want to get a deal on the person who's in charge of everything? Like (laughs) everything, you don't need a deal on me. (laughs) And so that's one of the first things I say to my clients. I also tend to be a little bit of a control freak. I think that's just the nature of planners. Mm -hmm. I think that most vendors, that we work with appreciate that about me because they know what to expect and they know it's going to get done. Um, actually, I, we briefly mentioned Wedding MBA, but that is the t- I'm going to be talking about that, like working with untested wedding pros and when to allow it and when not to allow it and, you know, kind of staying away from friends and family and that sort of thing, which I feel really strongly about. Mm-hmm. Um, we are from a really large market in New Orleans. So we have a ton of vendors right now. Like when I tell, we have 300 photographers on the knot right now. So wow. it's crazy. And so I, there have been a lot of instances where I do work with new people for one reason or the other, and I'm not opposed to it, certainly. Yeah. But I... I definitely like to control it and I like to set the expectations and I like to um, kind of oversee the whole process for sure. Because I agree with you. It always comes back to the planner, no matter how large or small. And so Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty specific with my clients about how I like the process to work and, and um, really that it, it, 
the buck kind of stops with me and I'm yeah. not in a bad way, but right. in the exact way you've explained where if there's a problem, I'm the first one you're coming to see every time. And so I can't be held accountable for things that I'm not involved in. Yeah. And or I things that I've, things that I've advised against, which we, you know, we have a situation coming up with a band where I expressly told the mother, like, this is the experiences I've had with them. This is why I prefer not to work with them. I don't feel good about it, but she was adamant that she'd seen them somewhere and they sound great and she's going to work with them anyway. And is that okay? And I'm like, absolutely. But you have to sign a liability release saying Mm -hmm. that, you know, I've given you this information and you've still chosen to move forward with them and that's okay. Um, But I'm not ultimately responsible if something happens that along the way. Yeah. I mean, we, unfortunately, we have to do that to cover our butts and cover our our business and, and be protective because, oh my God. We've all learned that the hard way too. (laughs) Right. It's happened so many times. And I mean, I'm not opposed to working with new people either. However, you can definitely tell the difference. It's like they get a 30 page timeline and they're like, oh my God, this is like a military drill sergeant. I'm like, no, I like to have fun. I actually love to have fun. It's just, I do mean business and everyone has to be accountable. And I do this for, for all the vendors to know what's going on in the wedding party and the VIP. Mm-hmm. Like I know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> like, and right. I mean, you know, it's not my can, first time. Right. I mean, nothing. we can remember everything, but my gosh, it's just, we put a lot of work into communication. And if the newer vendors aren't, accustomed to it. I call it potty training. Um, and Mm -hmm. so sometimes I'm like, well, we're going to have to potty train a few people, but I'm funny about it. But like, I'm serious. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, it almost is like potty training child, um, trying to just teach people your ways. So yeah, it's, it it can get interesting. Well, and, and to be honest, even vendors we've worked with a lot, sometimes take advantage of the fact of how organized we are, the fact that they know, we're going to tell them certain things. And I found that I kind of have to encourage them to be a little bit more independent sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we spend, and you know, this hours doing timelines, making phone calls, piecing it together. It's, it's not meant to be like a general idea. It's meant to be the guide for how it's going to happen. And, and we put everything you could possibly need on our final portfolio when we send it out to vendors. And I'll have like vendors call me and say like, Oh, you know, what time am I delivering the personal flowers into where? Um, (laughs) Well, that's on your timeline. And I just say that, like, I won't answer the question. I'll say it's on the information we sent because then you start to train your vendors to look at it. That's a hundred. That's exactly what we do. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, come on, you're an adult. You don't need me to tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes my closest friends are the worst because they'll just text and mm-hmm, the baker from mm-hmm. last week and he texted and he's like, Hey, I know that the timeline said that to come at four, but it's 11 and I see on the timeline that you're there setting up. So can I just swing by and bring the cake? And I'm like, oh, are you getting me? I'm like, yeah, you can. But like the room's not going to be ready. I don't want the cake in there with ladders everywhere and like it could fall over and like, yeah, you can put it in the back and then you're going to have to, then you're going to leave and then I'm going to have to bring it out. But you know, whatever. Yeah, I'll do it. Mm -hmm, But it's mm -hmm. so irritating. Like they don't, and it's like, I don't have 500 other things that I need to be doing. (laughs) Right. I totally agree. I'm not touching that cake. Um, but anyway, I prefer not to touch the cake, honestly, in any way humanly possible. I try to stay as far away from the cake as possible. Yeah. I I don't want to be responsible for that messing it up. Um, I mean, so what would you say that in your different companies, like what are the, what's the favorites of your clients where they just consistently come back and say, Oh my gosh, I love this. Thank you so much for doing this. Like, what is it that the clients Mm. absolutely love? (laughs) I mean, we strive to have perfection for climbing. Mean, that is definitely, sadly, our standards. Yeah. <laughs> we're, not, we're not very giving of the grace over here. We really, we know that we get one time to do an event. And so we work really hard that each event gets, gets a certain standard. And so I don't know that, you know, clients who are full service clients don't always see the other side of it. But so 
so we just try to have an experience of customer service and and really enjoying the process. That that's one of the things I tell my clients up front. Like I, this is relational for me. I want you to enjoy this. And if it if it seems too stressful, we're doing something wrong, and we need to reevaluate it and um, you know make adjustments. And when we sometimes do that, so I kind of change the way I approach each client. Um, I know for me, my favorite is really starting from the beginning and walking clients through the entire process. Like mm-hmm. I love the searching out the venue, creating the budget, taking care of design. I love like seeing you through everything. And that's one of the things that we did. And, and really we never did day of coordination, but we've recently stopped doing month of coordination too, is I just realized like, I don't love coordination. I, mm-hmm. I never really have. I, I don't want to come in feeling like I don't know you and you don't know me. And, and to be honest, because our market's so competitive, a lot of newer planners are really kind of doing it for not very much money, which I can't compete with. And so we decided as we started to really get more intimate weddings to just take that off our menu. We don't even, we don't offer that anymore. Yeah. So we will do a partial planning package where we, you know, do design and, and coordination together, or we build you a custom package, but we really try to sell our full service package and our full destination weekend package, because that's what we enjoy doing mm-hmm. and it's what we're good at. And it's what we think is the most value to you, honestly, as a client. So, and I, mean, I could not agree more. And I feel like a lot of people, they have trouble or they're challenged in selling the value of mm-hmm. why having a planner on board beginning to end. So when you have a, a client that you can tell they're kind of like on the fence, like are there certain nuggets of information you give them to try to make them understand like having you on board, it's so much more valuable along the way? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, I consider myself the queen of the budget. So I'm instantly going to trim your budget and make adjustments enough that I'm going to pay for myself. And I always talk about with clients in our initial meetings and consultations that it's not really always about the bottom line dollar amount. It's what you're getting the most value from and why we're a particular value. And we do, you know, certain things. For instance, I attend every event. So if you hire us to do full service planning, I'm going to be at your event every time. Um, And I think that's because when people hire us, they want me to be there. They want to work with me. And so I'm very specific about that. I'm very specific about the amount of events that I take in a given day or weekend. Like we really limit um, the events when we're dealing with, with full service clients. And so we just try to provide a certain a, a certain service that you maybe aren't going to get from someone who's less expensive than us. Um, I talk about my team and my staff and how we don't, we work in teams of three. Our standard for large event weekends is three, three people. Like that's where it starts and it goes up from there. And that's just because I think to be good at it, you need to be doing one at a time and you need to be having the right team available to do it. Someone dealing with transportation, someone dealing with ceremony, someone taking care of being, being sure everybody's on schedule and acting as an attendant. So we provide all these things to you that maybe, you know, you're not realizing other people aren't. And right. so that, that's where those, you know, you're not paying for people. You're not just getting me. You're getting a full team of people to come take care of you on your main day. And honestly, you know, I, I have people all the time say, where, where we can afford you or, or whatever. And, and what I would say to new planners is, you know, in the beginning, I felt bad when people said that to me. Oh, I feel bad. Like they can't afford me. How can I make it work? And now... I just realized that everybody's not a fit for me and that's okay. Like I can say no and feel good about it because I, I am not the right fit for everybody. Um, and, and that, that was a hard lesson to learn. Like it took me a while to learn that where, you know, I just wanted everybody's business in the beginning. And now I'm very particular even to the point where I turn down a lot of events that I don't feel like we're a good fit for. Like I, I trust my gut a little bit more than I did. And I never offer discounts for planning packages Mm -mm. because I know that we're worth it. And I just say that up front, you know, I I understand what you're saying. I understand that you can get it from someone else for less. Um, We feel like this is an appropriate package for what we're going to offer you. And so, you know, I wish you the best of luck if it's not the right fit. And sometimes it isn't and that's okay. 
Yep. We have ha- had to get very comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> and yeah, share- oh, definitely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. It's sometimes you just have to go through it and not like, well, no, we, we have been miserable. And we, now we've gotten to the point to where if we start working with someone, because sometimes you can tell if they're going to be nah, not really mm-hmm. good fit. Oh, every time. <laughs> yeah. Every and then time. <laughs> sometimes they're like a little bipolar. And I mean, we're kind of going through that with the person right now. And I'm like, how did how did this person end up? How did I we miss this? <laughs> like, I'm like, what happened here? Um, but I, I mean, so you you have been you, we've both been around for a while. Like, you know what you're doing. Like, I, from your perspective, this just this past year in terms of changes in the wedding industry and the challenges in the industry, mm-hmm. what have you seen? Um, well, first of all, clients expect us to be readily available. That, that's been kind of a transition we've seen over the past couple of years where, you know, I, I had a, a, a groom this past week who actually like booked an appointment to come for a visit and didn't even tell me, like asked me if the date was okay. He just sent me an email and said, I'm going to be there Tuesday and Wednesday. And I'm like, well, that's unfortunate because I'm going to be in Las Vegas at Wedding MBA, you know, <laughs> like I'm not available to you right. all the time. Not going to work. You have to, you know, I work a very strict schedule. I'm yep. not just kind of like hanging out, waiting to see if anyone's going to come. And so the, 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 the need for us to be readily available and to have boundaries, definitely, you know, they, people will suck the life out of you if you let them. So having, having clear boundaries and the need for those. And we've also just seen what, which is, I, I kind of see some transitioning happening, some transitions happening now where we have become very like, you know, pinning everything. Everything's on Pinterest. Everything needs to be this way and that way. I see my clients shifting back more towards like really custom events, not necessarily looking for what's trendy or, you know, while, while yes, you want to follow certain trends, not feeling the need to be like Pinterest worthy, if that makes sense. That's um, refreshing. <laughs> really, really spending a little bit more time, you know, creating what's right for them. And I think that's something that we really do well anyway. Like we, I always tell people up front, we, we're not planning my wedding. Like it may not be my style. All of my weddings don't look the same and that's intentional. Mm-hmm. Like I want you to be able to look at different events and different people and different budgets and see that we can really work with everybody and personalize it. So that's, that's what we try to do. Um, The industry in general, specifically in my market, we're seeing, like I mentioned, tons of new wedding vendors. I mean, new wedding planners, right and left, new photographers, new people just getting into the industry. And what that's really done in terms of our market, and I, I can't speak for everyone else, but it's challenging because it waters down the market a little bit. Um, you know, if you can get day of coordination or you know, month of coordination for somebody from $500. And then you come over to, to me, we're not the same thing, but it's so readily available that people are doing it. And I, and so I think wedding planning, particularly when I first started, you know, everybody didn't have a wedding planner. It was kind of like, Oh, well, a wedding planner is a luxury. It's not something that everybody automatically gets to have. Now I feel like everybody wants a wedding planner, regardless of budget, regardless of style, like everybody wants that touch and which is a good thing, but also, you know, it kind of is weird for planners themselves. And we have to have planners to touch every part of that market. And what that does is it's just, it's really kind of watered down the market a little bit. Um, and that's for all vendors. And, and what I find is just new vendors um, breaking in, even in other categories in photography and certain things. And, and maybe you take amazing photos, but you don't really know how events themselves work. One, one of the challenging things for me, particularly when it comes to photography is trying to let photographers and new photographers know that it, we want you to get all these photos. Like we have the list. It's important but the day shouldn't revolve around the photos. You know, you should be taking photos of what's happening. We shouldn't have this long extended schedule that's all about photos. Like we need to be more intentional with the experience. At least that's how I feel. I want beautiful photos. Clearly I use them on my social media. I get, you know, uh, recognition for it. And I want that, but I don't want that at the risk of my client's experience. Right. Because for me, that's what it's all about. It's how does my client feel? How do the guest feel? Um, so, yeah. so that's what we like to focus on, but, but it's become so, 
I want to get featured or I want to do this, or I want to do an Insta story, or I want to do this, that it, it, it comes to the point, particularly with younger vendors who it becomes all about that and less about their client and the experience they're having. And that's just something I hope we never from, for me, I hope that we personally never get to that point. It's so aggravating. Like I, it's so crazy because I mean, we typically know, like we have some clients that they um, have said to me, why didn't you Facebook love my wedding? Why didn't you? And I'm just like, are you effing kidding me? Because I was busy. Right. It's like, <laughs> like a, I don't do <laughs> these events and weddings for, to show it off on social. Like that's not why I do. Social media like didn't exist when we started this. Neither of us. Right. So <laughs> I do this for the freaking client and let's not even mention like, oh, there was a fire in the kitchen and I was picking up food and, you know, or your dog shit everywhere because you had to have your right. dog in your wedding. <laughs> no, no one else will do it. So like, exactly. that's why I would there, Facebook there, one, live in your freaking wedding. <laughs> one of my favorite stories to tell is we had a wedding planner once who like scheduled, was, she hired us for hair and makeup and she scheduled herself a hair and makeup appointment what? during the day. And I'm like, this is the craziest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> oh. I have, I'm usually showing up events with some red lipstick on because I've been so busy. I never like even got to put makeup on. This person scheduled themselves an appointment, got her hair and makeup done and just kind of hung oh. out. And I'm like, what is she doing? Oh my goodness. It's so yeah. funny. I mean, I, I don't understand, but I will say like the people who, I mean, we've kind of gotten to the point where we ask now like, and we have some clients that have phone checks. They're like, I don't want anything out. I don't want that. That's, mm-hmm. you know, we want this to be very intentional, closed off and private and, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so we'll, if, if our clients are like really into that, like I, I don't know if you do this, but you mentioned photos. And so we will budget and our marketing budget for specific weddings, like for our own person to come for an hour, sometimes two hours. And I'll pay Mm -hmm. for it out of my marketing budget because I know that the photographer that they, well, if I don't know the photographer and they're fairly new, you know, I'll say, Hey, Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure you're going to have a third or fourth shooter that can focus on the details and focus on stuff for the vendors. Because if not, I've got my own person. And if they're new, it's like, they're really scared. So they're like, no, no, just, I don't have time. Like you can just bring your own person. And then the people who really, you know, want the collaboration of working the wedding with all the, they're like, Oh no, I'll bring in an extra person for an hour or two. Absolutely. Because they want the credit. They want the association. They're actually smart. Um, it's a good way to grow your mm-hmm. business. But, you know, people see it different. Well, right. So do you guys do that? Well, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are. I, when, I'm do, when I'm dealing with people who don't get it, I usually try to explain why that's important. And I set time in my timeline for it. So mm-hmm. I say, you know, we are going to have candles lit and these things done an hour before the ceremony. And so we're able to get these photos. And a lot of times, you know, I had a photographer tell me last year, like, well, you know, I don't know if we're going to have time to do that. And I'm like, well, listen, when a bride spends $30,000 on her decor, she wants the photos of it. Like Uh she feels strongly about this. This is not like me just making this up. She wants to get some great photos of it. And, and I think the pressure is even on for our clients to get featured now, you know, they're like, Oh, I want to be on a blog. And so what do I need to do to to do that. Um, but I just try to explain that I've set time aside for it and I try to work together as to when that works best, you know, depending on venue setup and all those things. I've never actually had to hire my own photographer because we're just really lucky with great photographers in New Orleans. Honestly, we have really, really good photographers. And so anytime it's become an issue, like one time we just couldn't fit it in the schedule. The photographer was like, Hey, how about I bring an extra second shooter for two hours and take care of this, you know, cause we want to get it too. And so I've been lucky enough that I've just worked with people who kind of understand it and, and who I kind of, you know, have that conversation with in advance. That's amazing because that doesn't happen to me ever. It seems like we have just, I mean, we really awesome. have top notch photographers in new Orleans. We really do. That is so awesome. Um, what, what are your thoughts on like video and how clients, are they doing it? Are they not doing it? Uh, Do you like Mm -hmm. using video to, I love video really. And I love, 
I love modern, modern video, you know, mm-hmm. like it's so, it just is like a party. Every time I watch it, I'm like, I'm going to go there. Um, it's yeah. way less like cheesy than, than early wedding video when it first started, you know, like it really, there's an art to it. And so I love that. Um, and I always tell my clients and I would say probably 80% of my clients are doing video and I tell them you're there, you know, you're walking down the aisle. You're not getting to see your mom come down the aisle. You're not getting to see the flower girls. Like you, you miss out on so much because people are talking to you or you're being pulled away. So I think a video is a nice way for you get to get to go back and see some of the things that you miss. Yeah. And, and, and I think everyone that's gotten it has been really happy with it in the end when we've splurged on that. It just, it tells, motion tells such a different story (laughs) that I don't think Mm -hmm. it does. We'll realize until it's too late, (laughs) unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So agreed. Cause you can't, you know, you can't get it back. And we had, a, we had a situation two weeks ago where we, it really wasn't in the budget and we made a couple of recommendations and, and the bride found someone and it turns out it's like a national company who just hires local videographers to come out. And we didn't know who the shooter was going to be until the week of the wedding. And then it, it really like, it just wasn't put together. We had a really hard time getting in touch with him. He was like, oh, I didn't receive the payment. And then I had to show him the receipt. Like it was just real weird um, and then that day, like he comes and he's, we had this long, beautiful entrance at this venue, which is lined with candles and he's right in the middle of it where the bride's going to walk down the aisle. And so I had to, right before the processional starts, I have to go down and tell him like, you cannot, you're blocking the photographer and no one can see the bride. Like you can't be here. Oh and I was gosh. so annoyed by that. And I think that just circles back to that conversation of why you want to work with people that know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We worked with a company similar to that where I guess they just freelance all these people all over the place. And we, Mm -hmm. this girl got her a video and a DJ and they could not have been any worse. I'm like, how could this get any worse? Like, how did this happen? But she Mm. hurt some people before we got involved. And I'm like, again, this is why I'm a control freak. I mean, it was just awful. But the good thing was, is the client knew that we didn't have anything to do with it. And they actually gave us a great testimonial. They're like, don't hire your vendors before you hire your planner because the vendors that your planners don't hire will likely suck. (laughs) Like, oh, well, thanks. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, and that's, that it really is part of what you're paying me for. Part of mm-hmm. my fee comes from having 12 years of experience and having worked with people and, and knowing, you know, who's going to give you great service and a great product. And, you know, not that, not that I'm opposed to working with new people. I'm absolutely not. But there's a conversation to be had there, yeah. at least. Yeah. And even though, again, we give timelines and we try to communicate, you don't know what you don't know until you're in the moment. And then it's like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> That's not going to work. Oh, right. You're in the middle of the aisle. <laughs> you can't block the bride. Right? That's right. <laughs> She's important. Like, this is not about you. This is about her. Anyway. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for being on Weddings Unveiled today. And can you thank tell you. our listeners where they can find you? And if they have any questions for you, where they can reach out? Yes. So you can find us on Instagram and Facebook and all those good social media places at Emily Sullivan Event. And um, that's also our website. So feel free to go through the website, contact us through there. I'd be happy to answer any questions or lead you in the right direction if this is something you're considering. Awesome. So guys, check out emilysullivanevents.com. Be sure to connect on social media. Emily and her team have beautiful pictures to share and lots of educational nuggets and tips, which is my favorite. And thank you so much for listening to Weddings Unveiled. Catch us on the next episode and have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. 
Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.